Well, hi everyone, welcome to today's vlog. Uh, I'm here down in the prayer garden after a, a glorious and beautiful day. Although if you've been out on the roads, it seems to have been mayhem out there today. Um, but we continue this idea of wrestling with God uh, as we bring this chapter um, of Philip Yancey's book to a close today. And uh, we looked at this wrestling with God on Saturday when we looked at the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel, or was it actually God himself? Um, and he had his hip put out. Um, and we looked at how that can feel like a, a, a very intimate and a, a long way away from our normal daily prayer life, but how valuable it can be um, as an inspiration to be honest with God and, and to indeed embrace God and allow him to embrace us. And really Philip Yancey continues that in today's uh, blog by the title of What is the Opposite of Love? Well, when you think about it, what is the opposite of love? It could be that you would think hate, or it could be that you might think violence or anger. But in this context, Philip Yancey suggests to us the opposite of love is indifference. Actually not to bother or not to care or just to treat somebody with politeness when really behind the mask you're either seething or, or wanting to deepen a relationship in a much more powerful way it just feels so false so shallow and really Jesus picks this up when he um, gives part of his Sermon on the Mount he talks in chapter 6 of Matthew's Gospel he says he says this bring it up here he says to the crowds when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners and to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now this goes to the very basis of a contemplative life in prayer which I'd never really previously seen as sort of wrestling with God but there is some truth in it you see we can offer our polite prayers to God I don't know whether you've ever been maybe in a, a home group situation or maybe asked to lead prayer openly in church or in a small group or whatever and um, it sort of goes around the room and you're thinking oh I don't know what to say um, and you think oh I'll just think of something and you think well I w I'll think of whatever the other person thinks I ought to say and it might be that you try and cover on many bases or you, you remember everybody's name or, or whatever and it all becomes very polite and very sort of clunky and mechanical and although I suppose at one level that can be okay but it doesn't really say very much it doesn't really say what's in your heart. It would be almost better to say, I don't know what to pray, Lord. Um, help me to find words. And I don't really like praying out loud anyway. Um, amen. That would be much more authentic. And this is what Jesus is trying to encourage us in when he talks about finding a, an inner room, closing the door and praying to our Father who is in secret. He's clearly using something as a metaphor here because first century Jewish people, ordinary people like you and I, we would have lived up in a, a one up, one down. We wouldn't have had an inner room as such. It wasn't as though people lived in big palaces, or well, very few people did. They lived in very humble and simple dwellings. Indeed, they spent most of their life outdoors. So he's using this as an analogy. He's talking about finding that interior space, um, maybe by being on your own, um, often we find our, our deepest and most honest prayers are when we are on our own and finding that place where we can be really true with ourselves and therefore with him not just trying to please everybody or even please God but actually honest with ourselves and we can indeed come to silence this is the inner room and we shut the door we shut the door on the outside world for a few moments and that can be humbling in itself because it means the world can quite literally get on without us. One of the things I've loved doing down in this prayer garden has been to shut my eyes for five minutes, sometimes even ten minutes or a quarter of an hour, not necessarily to fall asleep,
but to listen and let the world go on without me. The world can exist without Matthew Thompson or even without your good self for a few moments. And in that way, I set myself free to be fully me with a God who loves me. And then to pray to my father who is in secret. In secret means in the depths of my heart, in the depths of my being, not just then in my head, in my, in my thinking, although he can be there too, actually just being able to be truly who I am without overthinking it or overcomplicating it. And it's here in this wonderful space that authentic prayer Jesus suggests takes place. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Everyone can be there because it's not about what we do. It's indeed just being in him. And yet ultimately that is what we're called to in our life of prayer, wrestling with him in the stillness and the love. Have a good rest of the day. God bless. Bye for now.